We continue now at the top of Daf Tesvavam and Beis Maseches Megillah. This is Megillah Daf 15b. The Gemara here concludes the sentence Bipruzbute, which means that again Haman was poor. Haman used to be the slave to Mordechai, and that's what Haman did not like—the fact that Mordechai knew of his origins. Rashi over here says Buti Loshan Anius. It's a language of of poverty. Kamova Havet Havitanu Bemaseches Gitten, like the language of Havet Havitan. We find this in Maseches Gitten. Amar Rapapa and Rapapa said Vekaru Le Avda de Mizdavin Betalmi. They used to call Haman the servant who was sold for a loaf of bread. Rashi over here says, Betulmi Nahama, Bikikros Lechem, for loaves of bread, he was sold to be a slave. The Gemara returns to the Pasuk in the Megillah, it was darshaning previously. Again, Haman says, Vicholze inenu shaveli, meaning all that Haman has, it doesn't, it's not worth anything to him. When he sees Mordechai, Malamed comes to teach us, Shekhol Genozov Shaloso Rasha, all of the treasures that this wicked person had, that Haman had, Chakuk and Alibu, they were carved upon his heart. But when he would see Mordechai sitting in the gate of the king, Amar, he would say, All of these things that I have, it's worth nothing to me when I see Mordechai sitting at the gate of the king. And the Gemara continues, And Rebbe Lazar says in the name of Rebbe Chanino, Asir HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Leo Satar Barosh called Tzadik V'Tzadik. In the future, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will be a crown on the head of every single Tzadik. Shenemar, like the Pasuk says, Bayom HaHu Yeh Hashem Tzavakos Lateris Seviva Gomer. Pasuk says that in the future, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will be a crown of glory. My Lateris Seviva Litzviras Tefara. What exactly is the meaning of this Pasuk, this crown of glory, and also like this royal headband of beauty? What does it mean? It means Laosin Sivyono. So the word Svi is a hint to those who do His will. Ulemitzap in Tifarto, and those who await his glory. Those are the people who are, who Akarish Baruch will be like a crown for them. So Yachol Akol, so I might think that might be for everybody. Tamid Lomar Lesheer Amo, the Pasuk finishes off and says, to the remnant of his people, Lemisha Mesim Atzmo Kishirayim, it means somebody who treats himself like he's a remnant, like he's a leftover. In other words, for those who are humble, that's what Akarish Baruch will be a crown for. And the Gemara Darshan's further, Ulruach Mishpat, the Pasuk says, same area over there, the Pasuk says, for a spirit of judgment, what does that refer to? So the Gemara says that refers to Yitzra, that refers to somebody who judges his Yitzra Hara. The Gemara is going to understand all of this having to do with somebody who works on his character traits. Well, Yoshev al but what does it mean, somebody who sits in, in judgment? Zehadon din emes lamito, that's somebody who judges a true judgment. Vilegvura, what does the Pasuk mean when it says Gevura? Zeham eskaber al Yitzra, somebody who overcomes his Yitzra Hara. And Meshivim el what does it mean, Meshivim el Chama? Shenosin venosin b'melchamta shel Torah, means those who, can, who, who go back and forth in the war of Torah. It's all referring to the learning of Torah. Shara to the gates, Elu Talmidei Chachamim, that's also a reference to the Talmidei Chachamim. In other words, this entire Pasuk over here, these Pesukim over here are all referring to people who have raised themselves up to a high spiritual level. Shemashkimen umarivin bevatei knasios, bevatei midrashos. The word gates is a reference to the fact that Talmidei Chachamim, they get up early and they stay late in the shuls and in the base medrash. And the Gemara continues, Amra midas hadin lefnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The, the Midah of judgment says in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ribono Shalola, master of the world, Manishtanu Elu Me'elu. What's the difference between these people and those people? What's the difference between those who are being judged for good and the others? So Amar Lo HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so HaKadosh Baruch Hu says back, Yisrael Osku B'Torah. When it comes to Klal Yisrael, they learn Torah. Umosa Olam Lo Osku B'Torah. When it comes to the nations of the world, they're not learning Torah. That's the difference between Klal Yisrael and the other nations. And so the Gemara continues that the Midas Hadin says back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Amar Lei says to him, Gamele Bayayin Shogu Vashecher Toh. No, these ones also, they drink the wine and they stumble and they drink the beer. And again, it gets them drunk, they sin. Paku Pelilia. Paku Pelilia, the Gemara explains, Ain Paku El Gehenim. The word Paku over here is a reference to Gehenim. Shanem, like the Pasuk says, Velo Siya Zos Lechalafuka. It shouldn't be like a stumbling block for you. The idea over here is, they also, even the Jewish people, they deserve punishment for their sins. Vein Pelilia El Dayonim. The word Pelilia refers to judges. Again, they refer, they, they deserve a judgment. Shanemar, like the Pasuk says, Vinasan Biflilim. So essentially, the Midas Hadin says, even the, even Klal Yisrael has its Averos that they deserve judgment for. As Rashi over here says, Biyayin Shagu, because of wine, they make mistakes, they also have Averos. Kilomer means to say, Afheim Asukahim, they also act like they act. Lafigach Donim, therefore they should be judged. And Rashi continues, Paku Plilia means again, Legehenim Nishpatu, they too should be judged to Gehenim. And the Gemara returns to the Psukim in Megillah Sester, Vatamod, Bachatsar, Beis Hamelech Apnimi. So again, o- Esther is approaching Achashvero, she goes to the inner chamber of the king. Amr Rebbe Levi, Rebbe Levi says, Kevon Shigia Lebeis Hatzlamim. When she reached that inner chamber, that was the house where the idols were kept. 
Nistalka hey mena shchina. The shchina left her. Amra, she said, Kaili, Kaili, Lama Zavtani. She said, My God, my God, why have you left me? Shema atadon al shoge kamezid vialonis karatsun. Maybe you're judging something that's by mistake, as if it's on purpose, something that's forced, as if it's done willingly. In other words, I'm not going willingly. Tachashveros, you shouldn't judge me so harshly. O Shema al shakarasiv kelev. The Gemara continues that she says, Maybe it's because I called Haman a kelev, a dog. Shenemar, like the Pasuk says, Hatsila mecherev nafshi, miad kelev yechidasi. Save me from the kelev. Maybe that's why the Shechina is leaving me. So Chazro Kraso Arye. So instead she retracted and, and instead she called him a lion. Shenemar, like the Pasuk goes on to say, Hoshieni mi piarye, save me from the mouth of the lion. And the Gemara continues, the Pasuk in the Megillah says, Vahi kiros ha-melech esester ha-malka. It says, when the king saw Esther the queen, Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Gimel malachi ashores, nizdamnu lo bosashar. There were three angels that helped Esther at that moment. Echad sheigbiya savara, one lifted up her neck, let her st- let her stand upright without shame. V'echad shemasha chut shel chesed aleah, the other put a string of kindness on her so that she would find favor in the eyes of Achashverosh. V'echad shemasa chesasharvin, and the other one stretched out Achashverosh's scepter. V'kama, how much was it stretched out? Amr Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya says, Shtei Amos, it was two Amos, Shtei Amos, Hoya rather, it was two Amos, V'hemido al Shtei Mesrei, and it became twelve Amos. V'yamri lo al Shei Shesrei, V'yamri lo al Esrem V'yarba, some say sixteen Amos, some say twenty-four Amos, V'masnisa tona al Shishim, in the Brysa it says it was sixty Amos, V'chein atamotzi be'amosa shel bas paro, we also find that the arm of the daughter of Paro, it stretched out when, t- when she went to retrieve Moshe Rabbeinu from the river. We also find this by the teeth of the wicked. It's a punishment for the wicked. Like the Pasuk says, You break the teeth of the wicked. Don't read the Pasuk as you break it. Rather, it's that you stretch it out. Rabbi Bar Ofran says in the name of Rabbi Lozer, Shashamar me Rabbo, ve Rabbo, me Rabbo, that he heard from his Rebbe, who heard from his Rebbe, Masayim, that it actually stretched out 200 Amos. And the Gemara continues, the Megillah says, Vayomer lo hamelech le Esther hamalka, maba kashosech ad chatsi hamalchus viseyos. The king says to Esther hamalka, what do you want? I'll give you up to half of the, half of the kingdom. So chatsi hamalchus velo kol hamalchus. So the Gemara darshans, he was willing to give up to half, but he wasn't willing to give her the entire kingdom. He also wasn't willing to give her something that would divide, that would be a barrier for the kingdom. And what was that? He was telling Esther he's not willing to build the Beis HaMikdash. In any case, the Gemara continues that the Pasuk says, It says that Esther invited the king, but also invited Haman to the feast. And so the Gemara says, and the rabbis taught, Why did Esther see fit that she should invite Haman to the feast? Rabbi Lazar, Omer Rabbi Lazar says, Pachim tamnalo. This was really, she was hiding a trap within the invitation. Shanema, like the Pasuk says, Yishol chanam lefneim lepach. It says their table will be in front of them as a trap. Rabbi Yoshua, Omer Rabbi Yoshua says, Mi beisavio lamda. She learned this from the house of her father. Shanema, like the Pasuk says, Im ro'av so na'acho hachileyu lechem v'gomer. The Pasuk says that if your, if your enemy is hungry, you should feed him bread. That's a Pasuk in Mishlei. Rabbi Meir, Omer Rabbi Meir says, Kadesh lo yitol eitzavimrod. She wanted to invite him so he'd be busy. He wouldn't be able to take counsel. He wouldn't be able to get advice and rebel. Rabbi Yehuda, Omer Rabbi Yehuda says, Kedesh lo yakiru ba shehi Yehudis. She invited him so that he wouldn't realize that she was Jewish. Otherwise, it might be suspicious. Rabbi Nechemi, Omer Rabbi Nechemi says, Kedesh lo yomru Yisrael achos yesh lan beves hamelech. It was in order that Klal Yisrael shouldn't say, we have a sister in the house of the king. We have nothing to worry about. V'yasichu da'itan min arachem. And then they're going to distract themselves and they're not going to daven for mercy. So she wanted to avoid that the Jewish people shouldn't be too complacent. Rabbi Yossi, Yom, Rabbi Yossi says, he so that he's around her all the time. Again, she'll be able to watch him. She'll be able to trap him. Rabbi Shimon ben Manasseh, Yom, Rabbi Shimon ben Manasseh says, Ula yargish hamakom lanunes. She invited him along because then maybe HaKadosh Baruch Hu would sense this, so to speak, and he would perform a miracle on behalf of Klal Yisrael. Rabbi Yosho ben Karcha, Omer, Rabbi Yosho ben Karcha says, Azbir lo ponim I'll invite him, and that way he'll get killed, and I'm willing to sacrifice myself as well. Hu vihi, that he would be killed, and she also, Esther, she was willing to give up her life in order to save the Jewish people. Rabbi Gamliel, Omer, Rabbi Gamliel says, Melech hafachfachon haya. When it came to Achashverosh, she was a king that easily changed his mind. So she thought if she invited Haman again, so maybe Achashverosh would change his mind about Haman. 
Abba Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel says, Adayin Sri Chananul Modoy. We still need the words of Rabbi Eliezer HaModoy. He answers this question as well. The Tanya, as we learned in a Bryce, Rabbi Eliezer HaModoy Omer, Rabbi Eliezer HaModoy says, Kinaso Bamelech, Kinaso Besarim. He was, he was, uh, the, the king was jealous of him. The officers were jealous. As long as you could arouse the jealousy of others, that people would be jealous of Haman's stature, that was a way to try to take down Haman. And we'll take a look at a few Rashis over here. The building of the Beis HaMikdash would divide the kingdom. Rashi says, because the Beis HaMikdash was in the center of the world. It says that the world was created, the Evan Shasiyah, that came from the area of the Beis HaMikdash. Mi beis avia lam that she learned from her father. What do you mean she learned from her father? Shama hatino goes omrim kain. In other words, she heard the children saying these psukim. She heard this pasuk being recited, so she understood that this was a good plan. Viyimrod she wanted to keep that Haman wouldn't be able to rebel. Bimelech he would rebel against the king. Shaisa shaito matzlachas because right now his time he was having success. So again she wanted to prevent that. She yehi matzli la. She wanted that he would be by her. Maybe in some way she'll be able to cause him to stumble in front of the king, as we said. And Yargish Hakadosh Baruch Hu Shafani Mekareves Sonei and Shal Yisrael Hakadosh Baruch Hu will will realize, will sense, so to speak, that I'm bringing the enemies of Klal Yisrael close. Inami Yargish Ani Tzricho Lahachnif Roshaze Ul Zalzal Bechvodi. Or maybe Hakadosh Baruch Hu will sense that I need to lower myself in this manner in order to flatter this Russia. And Rashi continues Sheyharig Hu Vehi that Esther was willing to have herself killed. She Achshedeni Hamelech Mimenu. Maybe the king would suspect that Esther was with Haman. And then he'd end up killing both of them, and she was willing to take that chance. And then the Gemara had another answer. This was the king that always changed his mind. She said, maybe I can convince him, change his mind, and kill Haman. If he's not right here, if Haman's not right in front of us, then the hour will pass, and Achashverosh will change his mind back, and then he won't kill Haman. So therefore, she wanted to make sure that Haman was present in case Achashverosh would turn against Haman, he could kill Haman at that moment. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Omar Rabbi says another reason why she invited Haman, as the Pasuk says, Lifnei Shever Ga'on, this is a Pasuk in Mishlei, Pasuk is saying before the, distre- the destruction comes pride. If she, could, if she could make Haman prideful, so then that would lead to his destruction. Abayi Varava Damri Tarvayo, Abayi and Rava, they both say another answer, it says in the Pasuk that when they are heated, so then I'm going to give them a feast, I'm going to give them what to eat, and through that, that will come about their destruction. And Rashi over here explains, Again, this is a Pasuk, this Pasuk is talking about Belshazzar. There was a return from the war, Daryavish and Koresh were sieging Bavel, and Belshazzar also hayom, v'hayu ayefim v'chamim, and Belshazzar won that day, and they were tired, and they were hot. They sat to drink, they became drunk. And on that day, he was killed. So that's what Esther was saying over here. Once they have this feast, they become drunk. That's what, give them, that's what gives them the punishment. And so she figured she'll invite Haman, he'll come to the feast, he'll get drunk, and that will lead to his punishment. And the Gemara continues, He found a Leo and Novi. Amar Lehi said to him, Keman chazio Esther v'avdahachi. Why did Esther see fit to do this? Why did she invite Haman to the feast? Amar Lehi, he said back to him, Elio said back, Kekulu tanoi u'chekulu amorai. All these tanoim you quoted above with all the various reasons. All these amoraim you quoted above, above with all the various reasons. They are all correct. And the Gemara continues, the Pasuk in the Megillah says, Vayisaper lehem Haman es kvod ashro v'rov bonav. It says that Haman told all of the honor of his wealth and his many children, and the Gemara says, V'kama rov bonav, and how much was all of his children? Amar Rav, Rav says, Lamed, there were actually 30. Asara Mesu, 10 of them died. Vasara Nislu, 10 of them were hung. Vasara Mechazran al and 10 of them were going around, they had to collect money door to door. Rabbonin Amri and the Rabbonin say, Osan Shemechazran al Apsachim Shivim Havit. The ones that were going collecting door to door, there were 70 of them. Tachsev, like the Pasuk says, Seveyim Balechem Niskaru, those who were satisfied, they hired themselves out for bread. Al Tikre Seveyim Elo Shivim. Don't read the word as Seveyim, read it as Shivim, as 70, again indicating these 70 sons of Haman. And the Gemara continues, Varami Barabba, Amar, and Rami Barabba says, Kulon Masayim Ushmona Havit. There were actually 208 sons of Haman. Shanamar, like the Pasuk says, Varov Bonav. It says Varov Bonav, and the Gematri of Rov is 208. The Gemara says, Varov Begematri Mosan Varbeser Havit. What are you talking about? Rov and Gematri is not 208, it's 214. 
And so the Gemara says, Amr of Nachman bar Yitzchak, of Nachman bar Yitzchak says, Varov ksiv. The word Varov is written without a vav between the resh and the bays, and therefore it actually comes out to 208. The Gemara continues, the Pasuk in the Megillah says, Balayla hahu nodidosh nas hamelech. It says that that night, the king, meaning the king Achashverosh, was not able to sleep. Amr Rabbi Tanchum, Rabbi Tanchum says, nodidosh nas malko shel olam. That's really a reference not the king Achashverosh. It's really a reference to the Ribbon Shalom. The Ribbon Shalom was ready to take action now on behalf of the Jewish people. But Rabbon and Amri and the Rabbon and say, Nodadu El Yonim and Nodadu Tachtonim. The upper ones were not able to sleep, referring to the angels, and the lower ones were not able to sleep, referring to Klal Yisrael. Rav Amar Rav says, Shnas Hamelech Achashverosh Ma'amish. No, it really means that Achashverosh was not able to sleep. Naflolei Mil Sabadaite. What happened was that a thought crossed his mind. Amari said, "My dekamon is aminte Esther lahaman. What is this over here that Esther is inviting Haman? Dilma eitzah kashakli love Maybe they're having some counsel against me. Maybe they're conspiring against him, meaning him, him meaning himself. Kashakli love dahu gavra. Maybe they're they're conspiring against that individual, meaning myself. Lemiktale. Maybe they want to kill me. But hadar Amar. But then he said, Ihachi, if so, lo have a gavra derachimli. Isn't there somebody?" Who might have mercy on me? Maybe there's somebody who likes me enough. They'll tell me about the conspiracy. They have a modali. They'll let me know about it. Hadar Amar then he said to himself, Deal ma'ika inish. Maybe there's a person. The Ovid Beit Tivusa who did a favor for me once. The low parate and I never paid him back. In other words, maybe people don't want to help me because they think they're not going to get a reward. Let me find out if anybody helped me and I owe them something. I need a reward. I need to reward that individual. Misham hachi for that reason. Mimni inchi. Maybe that's the reason people are stopping. They're not coming to tell me what's going on. Uh, that's why people are refraining from revealing these conspiracies against me. So that's what Achashverosh was thinking. The reason he wasn't able to sleep was he was bothered by the thought, perhaps there's a conspiracy against him, and maybe people don't want to reveal this to him. So therefore he has to find out, he has to make sure to reward those who reveal the conspiracies against him. Miad vayomer lohavi a sefer hazichronos divrei hayamim. That's why he immediately says, bring the sefer hazichronos divrei hayamim, bring the book where we keep our records, v'yu nikroim, it should be read, and that way it was read to Achashverosh, and he could find out if he owes anybody anything. The Gemar Darshan's V'yu Nikroi means that it was read miraculously on its own to him. Vayimotzei Kosov, it says it was found there written. So the Gemar says, Ksav mi boile. Shouldn't it say Ksav? It was found written. What's Kosov? Melamed, this comes to teach us, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daftazayin Omid Aleph.